A few weeks ago, I gave a sermon on love, and I was going through the YouTube uh, preachers, and I came across this pastor that did, in about three minutes, a sermon on love that took me 15 minutes to deliver. So I thought what we'd, we would do today is have a, an example of how maybe us pastors can cut down our sermon time and get to the point more quickly. And this pastor has done an outstanding job. And this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Uh, um, we come to know love. Uh, God is love. We do not realize it, but it has happened. We have become so obsessed with our smartphones that it is just incredible. We are looking at these things so much that we fall into fountains and malls, there are car accidents every day with people looking at their smartphones and texting one thing or another. Last weekend, Ginger and I went to Reveille down here to have breakfast on Saturday morning, and a family, mother and a father, came in with uh, two daughters and a son, and it was probably the first time they had been together all week. And they were going to have a nice breakfast out. Well, the mother put her smartphone right beside her plate, and for the whole meal, she looked at her smartphone. Never said a single word to her husband, and the only word she said to her youngest daughter was, We paid for those pancakes, now dead gum it, eat them! And the, and the little girl said, I don't like them, and the mother said, I don't care. It is ridiculous how we have become obsessed with our smartphones. To the point that we answer these in the movie, we turn them on every few seconds, even when we're in church or whatever, and we're missing so much by looking at this little bitty screen. Back in the early spring, Ginger and I went to St. Simon's Island for the first time. I'd never been there before. And if you've been there, you know how beautiful it is. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beach area, and the little town is just precious. Well, there were five college-age girls staying in the, um, I think we stayed in a place called the Beach Club, and uh, had a nice pool and a nice garden uh, area out there, and was right on the beach. Those five college-age girls sat at the beach with this beautiful ocean in front of them, and every time we would see them, they weren't talking to one another, they were looking at their smartphones. And even when they came up from the beach to uh, cool off in the swimming pool because they didn't want to get in the ocean for some reason or another, <clears throat> they would uh, cool off in the swimming pool and take their iPhones with them and walk around in the water like this, looking at their iPhones. And I'm thinking, it was um, probably fourteen or $1,500 to rent a condo down there for a week. I'm wondering, I wanted to ask those girls, why don't you all stay at home, put those chairs, uh, some chairs on your deck, and just do that without spending the $1,500? 
you could have bought three new uh, smartphones uh, in the future. And so as we uh, deal with this humongous story of creation, I want to tell you this. You do not have to wait until you die and go to heaven to behold the glory of God. The story of creation says the glory of God is everywhere. All we have to do is seriously put down our smartphones, get our heads up, go outside, and behold the glory of God. Every year, until I can't go out there anymore, I intend to go to Arizona in the wintertime because I have never seen a more beautiful sunset than in Arizona in the wintertime. Ginger's sister owns a home in Carefree, and her backyard looks west. And every night when the sun sets right behind a saguaro cactus, you can see the mountain to the right, the sunset right in front of you, the saguaro cactus to the left, and all of a sudden, if there are any clouds in the sky, they turned various shades of orange and purple. And it doesn't end with the sunset. After the sun sets, and, and I know that, that your sister must think I'm the rudest person in the world because whenever I'm out there, I just go out there and sit in her backyard. Don't talk to anybody. Don't bother anybody. They may be happy that I'm out there. Who knows? But anyway, after the sun sets, they have such restrictive laws out there on street lights <clears throat> that it gets really dark. But the darkness just reveals more of the glory of God because it really looks like you can reach up and touch the stars. And not too far from Carefree is Sedona. And you've seen those pictures of the orange mountains and orange whatever over there. Uh, you think, well, that's just on a travel guide. They've, they've fixed the camera to make it look orange, so you'll go out there and it's really probably brown or something. But when we went to Sedona, which is just a little ways up from Carefree, behold the glory of God. Those mountains really are orange and purple and blue. And everywhere you go, uh, the Grand Canyon, you can behold the glory of God. I've never been to the Grand Canyon, but I want to go because that's got to be also another place you can behold the glory of God. But say you don't want to go to Arizona. You can go to the Grand Tetons in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It's just absolutely beautiful. I could not believe that you could be in a place like that in the summertime and there not be any mosquitoes or flies or anything like that and it was just so cool and no humidity. And the little place where we stayed at Moose, Moose, Wyoming is, is just outside of Jackson Hole. And it's right at the entrance of the park. We stayed right beside the Snake River and listened to the water go by and looked at the Grand Tetons. And if you don't believe in God when you see something like that, then there's something really wrong with you because there is these Three mountains right together, the Grand Tetons, and you just behold the glory of God. And then all of a sudden, you see cars stopping everywhere. And, you, and I said, Aaron, what's going on? And um, he said, they probably spotted some animal or something. So like every other tourist, <laughs> got in the car and went over there. And there's this moose just grazing in the field. And behind the moose, the Grand Tetons. Behold the glory of God. It's everywhere. And then if you don't get to Jackson Hole and you feel like someplace warm, go out to Bermuda. Uh, Ginger and I, we took a trip out to Bermuda early in our uh, life together. And the thing that hooked me was, there was a brochure I got, and I'm a sucker. I really am. I, I fall for these brochures and stuff like that. If you tell me something's free or pretty, I'm going after it. So anyway, we got this brochure, and it said, uh, the pink sands of Bermuda, come and join us. And I said, that's bull turkey. There ain't no pink sand. That's crazy. But we're going to go and see. 
And I'm going to come back and I'm going to say I'm a sucker. I spent the money to see pink sand that didn't exist. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sue the travel agency. I'm going to tell her you have to pay me back because you told me the sand was pink. So Ginger and I, we get on a plane and um, I forgot where we were. We were, we were in Charlotte, I guess. And uh, we get on a plane and we have to fly to New York to get to Bermuda because there's still people that believe in the, the, the mis mystic powers of the Bermuda Triangle. That's all bull. That, we don't, that's this horse. But anyway, we had to fly all the way to New York to get to Bermuda. Well, Bermuda's right off the coast of North Carolina. I could have swam out there for the time it took us to get to New York and then down to Bermuda. But got into the hotel room, waiting to be sucker punched, walk out on the beach at Elbow Beach in Bermuda, and guess what? The sand is pink. Pink sand, I kid you not. If you go upon the basis of this sermon and it's not pink, I will pay for your trip. I promise you. I don't know if they went out there with food coloring or what, but just before I got there, but it was pink. And Bermuda, the water is crystal clear blue. And so behold the glory of God, it's everywhere. And if you don't want to go to, to Bermuda, we uh, took a trip, a bunch of us here in the church, a cruise uh, to the Scandinavian countries. And one time we were coming into uh, Norway and we saw those fjords. And I said to myself, behold the glory of God. These are the places I'm sure you went this past summer and enjoyed your vacation. Because that's where we have a chance to rest and recuperate and behold the glory of God. Say you don't want to go to Bermuda, you don't want to go to Wyoming, you don't want to go to Arizona. Then get in your car and go to the mountains of Georgia and North Carolina this fall. And look at those leaves from a distance and behold the glory of God. When I was a child, uh, we lived in the middle of Duke Forest, and we were surrounded by acres and acres of, of virgin land. And in our front yard, we had this huge maple tree. And when I would get home from school in the afternoon in the fall, those leaves were so bright and so orange that I used to go and sit, climb in the, up in that tree and just sit in the middle of those beautiful orange leaves and behold the glory of God. And if you don't want to go to North Carolina, you don't want to go to the mountains, then go to Texas and go to the hill country and behold the glory of God. God created all this for us to enjoy. Behold the glory of God. And also in the springtime, wherever you are, it doesn't make any difference here in Texas, California, or up north or whatever, the springtime is gorgeous. Have you ever heard the story about how the Stouffers got to, to uh, Marietta, Te Marietta, where am I? Marietta, Georgia. <laughs> I'm going all over the world here. Forgot where it was. But anyway, did you ever hear the story about... Y'all know the Stouffers, don't you? Larry and Julie um, Stouffer. Larry came down here for a job interview in the spring. And you know how beautiful it is here in the spring. Well, he's from Iowa. That may be one place where it's not so pretty. But anyway... <laughs> Anyway, he came down from Iowa, and it was still snow on the ground, and it was, uh, if you've ever been to the Midwest in the springtime when the snows are melting, it's really ugly because it's brown, the snow is brown, and it's, it's, it's slushy, and it's, it's all up under your car, and uh, it's, just, it's just not pretty. So Larry comes down here for a job interview. And it's gorgeous. He said it is so beautiful. The blossoms on the dogwood trees are blooming and the, the azaleas are blooming. It's just gorgeous. And he, and he doesn't get the job. But he calls his wife and he said, put the house on the market. We're moving. And she said, oh, great. Did you get the job? She said, no, but I'm never coming back to Iowa. And so around here in the springtime, it is beautiful. Behold the glory of God. It's right outside your window. As a kid in those same woods in the springtime, there were dogwood trees everywhere around our house. And I would climb up into the midst of those dogwood trees and just look at those flowers and just try to consume nature, try to consume God's creation because you feel close to God when you're in the middle of the beauty of his creation. And he put all this stuff here for our enjoyment. And so we behold the beauty of God in creation. I was um, leaving Divinity School one afternoon, and uh, when you leave the Duke Divinity School, you come down three flights of steps, 
and the Divinity School is way up on top of a hill right next to the chapel. And I was coming out of the Divinity School and there are balconies all along the back side of the Divinity School where you can go out there and sit and stand or whatever. And a lot of students were walking with me and, and uh, I heard one of the deans, Dean Maurice Ritchie, I can still hear his voice now. He called out a student's name and he said to that student, I don't know what his name was, maybe Richard or, or whatever, but he said, Richard, get your head out of that book and behold the glory of God. Because walking through the parking lot behind the Divinity School is surrounded by maple trees. And it was the fall, and these maple trees were dotted all through the woods there, and the dogwood trees, and they had turned an orange and a purple. And so everywhere you look, if you just get your eyes and, and face out of our smartphones, we can behold the glory of God. And also, I have a neighbor, and uh, uh, my neighbors are good people, I guess, uh, but I don't know them very well because I've got one neighbor that's got this uh, beautiful deck behind his house. It's kind of a, a, a rusty red deck, gorgeous deck. And what makes it even more beautiful is it's the trees that come right up around it. Ginger and I's deck watch, see their deck. So we, we're kind of nosy people. We kind of watch everybody. If you live in this area, you're going to see your neighbor. Because unless you're rich, you live this close to your neighbor and stuff. So we can't help but be nosy and mind everybody else's business. And um, I don't want to get off on my other neighbor, but <laughs> anyway, I'm still mowing his grass. And uh, I try to do it. I try to do it when he's not at home. And the other day, I didn't see his car in the driveway, so I thought I'd take my edger and blower over there and edge his front yard and blow off his driveway. Well, I smelled cigarette smoke. And I thought, well, who's smoking? Well, he was sitting on the front porch. <laughs> and you know what he did? I'm out there doing his yard. He goes. <laughs> and I thought, well, heck, he must not mind if I do his yard. But anyway, back to my other neighbor that has a beautiful deck. In the 12 years that we have lived next to them, we have never seen them one single time in the evening on their deck enjoying a glass of wine. He is constantly, and I know him, he's a computer person with Coca-Cola. He's looking at his computer all the time, I'm sure, in his basement, because that's where the light's on. I can see that too from my deck, so that's why I know he's staying. But anyway, the whole point of this creation story is that God created everything that there is for us. He wanted us to enjoy not only the beauty of nature, but all of the wonderful things that come forth from the ground. We have... Uh, uh, received corn from two different places in the Midwest this year. Ohio, which Sandra brought me, and also from Indiana, which Ginger brought me back from her sister. That corn came from the ground. God created that corn. Behold the glory of God. And he also made cows. And so every time I'm at Chicago's eating a piece of primary of this thick with blood pouring out of it, I behold the glory of God. Because without that, could we really enjoy the foods that we enjoy? So the book of Genesis, from a perspective that I hold, is a group of sermons given by Jewish priests to Jewish people to teach them about God and the creation story is to teach us that God is the creator. That just in a word, he can create all that there is. And then he also says at the end of the first chapter and the beginning of the second chapter, that he wants us to enjoy his creation. So this is the sermon today. It is to behold the glory of God, to get your, your face out of your um, smartphone, I haven't got a smartphone yet because I understand you have to be smart to own one. Uh, and I'm not. So I, I heard somebody the other day, they were talking in the staff, and they said, who in the world still has a flip phone? And I pulled mine out. They said, oh, excuse us. You know, we didn't mean anything, Pastor Grunky, you know about that. And, I, and, and so uh, they said, if you wave your phone across these squiggly little things, you get a coupon and stuff. Well, it don't work with a flip phone. 
I was in the grocery store the other day trying to do it, and this woman comes by me, and she said, that's not going to work. And I said, why not? She said, it don't work on a flip phone. I said, well, thank you very much. Can I have one of your coupons? She said, hell no. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, behold the glory of God. And remember what he said at the very end. He said, remember that I rested on the Sabbath day and I made it holy. This is the time that we come back together as members of the body of Christ. And we say thank you to God for the gift of creation. And Lord, give us the strength, the power, and the wisdom to get out of our houses, leave our smartphones in the den, go out on our decks, get a glass of wine that comes from the, the grapes of the vineyards, and behold the glory of God. God put it here for us to enjoy. Amen.